In this video, we will be naming and identifying the vertical intercepts of various functions. The vertical intercept, often referred to as the y-intercept, is the point at which the graph crosses or intersects the vertical axis. If we take a look at the graph below, notice how for all of these points on the vertical axis, the input or x-value is equal to zero. This indicates how we find the vertical intercepts of a function. We always set the input or x-value equal to zero, then determine the corresponding output function value or y-value. To summarize, the input value of the vertical intercept is always zero. The coordinates of the vertical intercept will be zero comma y or zero comma f of zero. To determine the vertical intercept of any function, we can follow any of these steps shown here. We can set the input equal to zero and find the output, or we can say set x equal to zero and find y, or we can evaluate f of zero. Let's look at some examples. The first function is f of x equals x squared plus three x minus 10. This is a degree two polynomial function, and therefore we call this a quadratic function. And now to find the vertical intercept, we set the input or x equal to zero, or determine the function value f of zero. f of zero is equal to zero squared plus three times zero minus 10 which simplifies to negative 10. Because f of zero is equal to negative 10, the vertical intercept, which is always an ordered pair, is zero comma negative 10. Next we have f of x equals five x plus seven. This is a polynomial function of degree one, and therefore we call this a linear function. To find the vertical intercept, which we may recognize this function is in slope intercept form, and therefore the vertical intercept or y-intercept is positive seven. Or to show work, we set the input or x equal to zero, giving us f of zero is equal to five times zero plus seven. f of zero is equal to seven. The vertical intercept is zero comma seven. Let's take a look at the graph of these two functions. Notice how the vertical intercept is this point here with the order pair zero comma negative 10. And for the linear function, we can see the vertical intercept is this point here with the ordered pair zero comma seven. Next we have f of x equals the square root of the quantity 36 minus three x. This is a radical function, but more specifically because we have a square root, we can call this more specifically a square root function. And now we'll find the vertical intercept by setting the input or x equal to zero, which gives us f of zero equals the square root of the quantity 36 minus three times zero. Well, three times zero is zero, and therefore this simplifies to the square root of 36, which is equal to six, because six squared is equal to 36. The vertical intercept is the ordered pair zero comma six. Next, we have another square root function. So to find the vertical intercept, we set the input or x equal to zero f of zero is equal to the square root of the quantity two times zero minus eight. Notice how here the radicand simplifies to negative eight, giving us f of zero is equal to the square root of negative eight. Remember for the result to be real, the radicand must be non-negative. The square root of negative eight is not real, and because the result is not real, this function has no vertical intercept. Let's look at these two graphs. For the first square root function, we can see the vertical intercept is this point here with the ordered pair zero comma six. And for the second square root function, notice how the graph does verify this function does not intersect or cross the vertical axis, and therefore there is no vertical intercept. Next we have f of x equals the cube root of the quantity four x minus six. This is a radical function, but because we have a cube root, more specifically, this is a cube root function. And to find the vertical intercept, we set x or the input equal to zero, which gives us f of zero equals the cube root of the quantity four times zero minus six. Simplifying, we have f of zero equals the cube root of negative six. Now remember, for a cube root, the radicand can be negative. This result is real, and therefore the exact ordered pair for the vertical intercept is zero comma 
the cube root of negative six. But let's also get a decimal approximation for the cube root of negative six, which will also verify this is real. Going to the calculator, to access the cube root, we press math and then option four, and then we enter negative six and enter. Run it to one decimal place, the cube root of negative six is approximately negative 1.8. So again, the calculator did verify the result of the cube root of negative six is real. Next, we have f of x equals 19. Notice how for this function, the output is always 19. This is called a constant function. So whatever the input is, the output is always 19. And therefore, if we set the input or x equal to zero, f of zero is still equal to 19. And therefore, the vertical intercept is the ordered pair zero comma 19. Looking at the graphs of these two functions, the vertical intercept of the cube root function is this point here, where the ordered pair is zero comma approximately negative 1.8. Remember the exact ordered pair was zero comma the cube root of negative six. And then for the constant function, we can see the vertical intercept is the ordered pair zero comma 19. The next function is f of x equals x cubed minus four x. This is a polynomial function of degree three, which we call a cubic function. To find the vertical intercept, we need to evaluate f of zero, which is the cube of zero minus four times zero, which is equal to zero. Because f of zero equals zero, the vertical intercept is the ordered pair zero comma zero, which we should recognize as the origin. Next, we have f of x equals the quantity x plus one divided by the quantity x minus six. This is a rational function because we have a ratio or a quotient of two polynomials, or more specifically, the quotient to ratio of two linear functions. So this is a rational function. And now we'll find f of zero to determine the vertical intercept, which gives us the quantity zero plus one divided by the quantity zero minus six, which gives us, what, negative one sixth and therefore the vertical intercept is the order pair zero comma negative one sixth. Let's look at these two graphs. For the cubic function, we can see the vertical intercept is the origin, which has an ordered pair zero comma zero. And for the rational function, this point here is the vertical intercept, which we know is going to have an ordered pair of zero comma negative one sixth. Let's look at two more functions. The next function is f of x equals x which is a polynomial function of degree one or a linear function. But in this case, because the input and the output are the same, more specifically, this is called the identity function. To find the vertical intercept, we need to evaluate f of zero. If we substitute zero for x, then the output is also zero. And therefore, the vertical intercept is the ordered pair zero comma zero, once again, the origin. And then finally, we have f of x equals the absolute value of x minus three. Because of the absolute value, this is an absolute value function. And now to find the vertical intercept, we evaluate f of zero. f of zero is equal to the absolute value of zero minus three, and therefore f of zero is equal to negative three. The vertical intercept is the ordered pair of zero comma negative three. Let's look at these two graphs. Notice how the identity function does have a vertical intercept at the origin with the ordered pair zero comma zero. And the absolute value function does intersect across the vertical axis at this point, which has an ordered pair zero comma negative three. I hope you found this helpful.